Welcome to the series where I show you the best pro settings in Rocket League. And make sure you stay to the end of this video as I'll be showing you a secret setting I'm sure you've not turned on and it will help your ranked play drastically. But before I get into the video, make sure to like and sub down below. I'm trying to hit 40 likes in this video and I'm also getting so close to 10k subs. So make sure you sub down below every single sub counts and please sub to the channel, I'm getting so, so close to 10k subs. And I'll get into the video now. So in this video, I'm showing you Zen's settings. Zen's a really good up and coming player, and I'm going to be showing you his settings in this video. There's a few settings that I've not got the details for, but I'll tell you what I think is the best. I mean, obviously Zen knows more than me, and camera settings is just personal preference at the end of the day. So I'll be showing you all of his settings now. To start off with gameplay, I've not actually got the um, I've not got his settings for gameplay. It's only cameras and controls that I've got settings for, and everything's just default really. Uh, I think input buffer might be changed and a few things like that. So just take a look at mine and change it for yours at home. So now for the camera, camera shake off obviously. Field of view he's got at 110. Then the distance he's actually got the distance at 270. Some pros have it a bit higher, some have it a bit lower, but I think 270 is a really good middle ground. Now for the height, he's got his height at 100. I always like my height at 100 as well. It kind of makes you able to do flicks a lot better as your camera is more in line with your car. It just makes flicks and everything a lot easier. And the distance is obviously so you can see the full field. I do freestyle so I put mine at like 240, but 270 is really good for comp. So now for angle, actually, yeah, angle, he's got his angle at minus three. This is actually pretty low. Normally people have it like minus four, maybe minus five, but minus three is still a good angle. So I'd recommend you give that a go, obviously. That makes your camera even more in line with the ball. So you're, it just gives you an extra level of flex and just mechanics in general. I always like my angle to be pretty low and flat with my car. Stiffness, he's got his stiffness at 0 0.35. Stiffness is when, it's, it's kind of a bit like distance. Having your sti stiffness down makes your distance away from your car a lot more. Some pros now all, all have it around one and like really high up. I actually like my stiffness to be a lot higher up, but obviously settings are personal preference, especially from stiffness downwards. And I, 0.35 it is a good setting still I mean it obviously is as he's using it now for the swivel speed the swivel he's got at four I always have mine a lot lower down but obviously four is good for him that just depends like when you press ball cam switch between ball cam and everything actually no it's not it's um when you're like moving your right stick that's why I have it really low down, so if I move the right stick, it actually shows me immediately. So I don't agree as much with this swivel speed setting, but it's all personal preference from there downwards. And now for the transition speed, he's got transition speed at 1. Then the demo transition speed, there isn't actually any... Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't find any data online for his demo transition speed, unfortunately. So I'm just going to leave it as default here for you. Inverted swivel, there was no information as well. For comp, a lot of people just turn it off. And if I was you doing comp, I would just leave it off like this. But for me, I always use inverted swivel and keep it on. As if you're doing freestyle, I really recommend you keep it on. It helps your long air dribbles. It helps your multiple flip resets. So I will just keep it on if you're doing uh, freestyle. And if you're not doing freestyle, just turn it off. Now for his controls. Before you look at mine and copy mine down, these aren't actually his controls, these are mine. But what he uses is basically everything is default. For example, his power slide is on square, not L1, his power slide is on square, like that. And basically everything he has is default. His normal air roll is on R1, yep, his normal air roll is on R1. And his air roll left is on L2. 
I don't really understand fully why it's on L2 because that's on break. And I, but it's, it's obvious, obviously his settings at the end of the day. So his arrow left, wherever that is. I can't even find it in the settings. You probably can see it and I'm just, is it S? No, it's not. But his arrow left, well, there we go, is on L2 there. And that's all of his um, keybinds. And now for his steering sense, his steering sense. Also, he uses cross dead sign. I'm not going to show it to you on Steam, but he uses cross dead sign. And his steering sense is 1.5. The lower the senses, the better it is for air dribbles, and the higher the sense, the better for flicks, flip presets, and musty flicks. I do think um, 1.5 is a really good middle ground, so I think this is a good setting for him. I would maybe put it up to 2, but this is obviously his setting, so I'm not going to change it. Controller dead zone, he's got 0 0.7. If you want to do more stalls, I would put it up to 1.5, but if you're just doing comp and you're not stalling at all, just keep it at 0 0.7 like his, as that's really good. Then his dodge dead zone is at 0 0.8. What is very high up. I don't think I've seen many people have it that high up. But it obviously works for him. So make sure you go and... That's basically everything for the camera and controls. All of these just keep default. If you're... um, Some people have vibrations on actually. I've seen a few people with vibrations on. But sorry if your keyboard... But he's a controller. He uses PS4 controller. So as I said, camera and controls, they're the only information I have. But make sure you stay on where I show you the interface settings. As that does actually help you a lot, having a few settings turned on from that. So now for the interface settings. I've shown you the camera and control settings. All of those are the pros players settings. But from interface onwards, it's my settings. And it's ones that I think are the best settings as I couldn't find any details or anything online to get these pro settings from interface onwards. But carry on with the video because there's a few um, important settings in these. So the first important setting I would change is the nameplate scale. It's originally at 100%, but I think it's pretty important for you to put it up to 120%. I actually got this off watching Rizzo's video, and he said that he puts it up to 120%. And I do feel like it actually makes a difference in comp. It makes you see your opponents easier. It's just all round better for comp in my opinion. So I would give it a go putting it up to 120% as I think, feel like it actually does make a difference. Nameplate modes, default, match notifications. I think it has all when you start the game. So if you're new to the game, I would put this up on time updates only. It does make the screen a lot less cluttered. And it's just a lot better in my opinion for just playing in general. It makes the experience a lot better. And I think this is turned on originally. If you're new to the game, make sure to turn that off. And team coloured boost meter. If you've seen people play on like TikTok or YouTube or stuff like that, some of the time their boost meter is a bit different colour. A lot of people ask me, why is it that colour or how do you make it that colour? And I see a lot of comments on other people's videos saying, how is it that colour? And that's because this is normally turned off and you want to turn that on. I feel like that actually makes the game look a lot better, in my opinion. So make sure to turn that on, as that actually does make the game look really cool. And everything else in here is just default. So now on video settings, everything's on performance. Having everything on performance does make it look a lot better, in my opinion. You might see some of the pros have like high quality, quality, performance, quality or whatever. But I feel like most of the time, if anyone's got those settings on, it's to make their game look better for you to watch it, if you know what I mean. So when they're playing by themselves, they might have everything on performance. But when they're recording their videos or they're live streaming, they have it on quality to make their game just look better for the audience. So I feel like... Just keep it on performance. If your computer's really good, maybe change a few settings to see what you can get away with. But I feel like it's more important for your game to run smoothly than look better. So make sure to 
keep it the basic settings and after you've kind of um, got your PC working well then make the settings a bit higher up and obviously this is high quality otherwise your game is just going to look rubbish. Now I'd have master volume up and I'd have gameplay volume up. I don't really see any point of having these ones on as well. But I'm just a player that just plays without audio. I mainly do freestyle so I don't think it's necessary to have audio. But for comp it's actually pretty important to have audio on to so make sure your master volume stays up. Actually I'll leave it here for now for you. Actually no I won't sight. But um there's nothing else in this um settings that are not default. So now for chat, I would also change this to teammates only a lot of the time as there's not actually any point speaking to the other team really and it just makes everything get toxic so just keep it on teammates only and everything's just default here nothing's different at all except from these two up here these are different and now for the quick chat, this is my quick chat but it doesn't really matter too much just do whatever you want. I never use quick chat, but this is my ones if you're wondering. And now I'm going to show you a few of my presets. I actually think that the preset on your card does actually matter and depends how you play. For example, if I'm playing with one like uh, this, I might not play as well as if I play with this one. So I've just got a few um few like um paint finishes for you to try. I always play better with Metallic Pearl or EXO. I don't know why, but I just always play better with EXO or Metallic Pearl. So I'd give it a go. And if you pick um, Metallic Pearl or EXO, I'd always pick black as the secondary and also pick quite a dark colour for the primary. I just always play a lot better like that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's placebo or what it is, but I would give it a go yourself. Then for the boost, I always use black standard. I always think black standard's the best just in general play. I mean, obviously, if you had... I feel like if you had one like this, you just wouldn't play as well. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or whatever, but I would give it a go yourself and try it out. Then also for the um, trail, I always find myself playing better with just a normal classic black. Or you can use light speed black as well. That one looks pretty good. So I think just more the more basic your car is, the better your play. I really do think that. So I'll just mess around with these different decals and stuff as well. And see what you best play with and just give it a go. And that's everything for this video. So make sure to sub as I'm trying to hit 10k subs. And it's going to help me a lot if you sub as every sub matters. Hit the like button as I'm trying to hit 40 likes in this video. And also YouTube recommended you one of these videos. So make sure you go and watch those videos.